Guys, uh, I've got a, another locomotive project. It's a brand that I've, is really unknown to me. It's a mob called Horsepower Locomotives. Uh, they do Australian locomotives. This is the C class. Um, funny thing about this locomotive, uh, it's uh, modern modern era technology, but they don't come DCC ready. They have to be hardwired, which I found a bit weird. It's a bit peculiar for modern locomotives to come out non-DCC ready. That makes me think that this locomotive might actually have, those of you that's familiar with the older style Buckmans, they had two frames bolting onto the sides, covering the motor in the center with little plastic grommets splitting the polarity. I'm thinking that this locomotive might have something like that, which is gonna be an absolute pain in the ass to DCC and your potential for shortage is a lot higher and the frames actually become positive and negative and they actually soak up a lot of your power so the locomotive becomes um, uh, draws a lot more current to keep to get it going but it's a nice looking locomotive um, it's a very cheap locomotive as far as Australian locomotives go and they've got them in all the libraries um, I'm really excited about this locomotive to be honest so this is the ARG scheme. This locomotive comes with KD couplers. So this is out of the box guys. I have not opened it yet. All right, so let's have a look what we got. Horsepower made in China. Um, the wheel pickups looks like Athen, Athen style. It's got minimal detail. The handrails, plastic, very thin plastic. I can see them being very fragile. Uh, these grills at the top are not see-through. Nothing on here is see-through. Very minimal roof detail. Um, the grills here is not see-through, but it's a weird casted type thing where I uh, focus, where you can see the radiator fans on the inside. I think that's a nice touch. That seems... Um, that's sufficient for me anyways it's um, it's a nice bit of detail got a bit of grab um, grab handles here and there but it's molded on on the roof sections dynamic brake section uh, like I say it's got minimal detail uh, fuel tank the locomotive is not heavy it's a very light weight locomotive um, some nice detailing on the back. Just, just give me one sec, I'm trying to get the focus. So like I say, a little bit of um, detail here and there. Not bad, not bad for what you pay. Um, let's get her on the workbench and get her opened up so we can actually see what we're dealing with. Like I said, uh, Uh, it's got screws there that I don't know what they're all about. I haven't seen that sort of thing before. I don't know if they will add in holding onto the shell. Yes, maybe something is holding onto the shell. All right, let's see if we take these ones out. I guess we're removing the tank, fuel tanks as well. But we've got one screw there, one screw there, one screw in there, one screw in there. But I think what's holding the shell is these little plastic tabs. And that spells disaster. Because if you break them, that's all she wrote, folks. Okay, so I got this locomotive open. Um, it's got all these tabs that you have to press in from underneath. And then it's got a tab at the front and a tab at the back. So it's not really what I was expecting in terms of the Buckman setup where you've got the two frames meeting each other. It's more like a Walters um, weight above the locomotive. However, the motor on this thing is 
by far one of the smallest ones with the smallest counterweights that I've seen yet in big diesel type locomotives like these. It's got a black paint on it, which I don't know if you, the camera's catching that, but the whole painting is flaking. I don't know what the deal with that is.
Okay guys, so I've got this locomotive on the track. Um, the minute I put it on, it had a short. I actually didn't do a lot of investigation. I figured I grabbed a faulty decoder out of my box. It happens, I keep my working decoders and my faulty decoders in the same box. So I ended up swapping out another decoder that I had on hand. It was, it's this little Buckman HO scale decoder. Popped it in and the locomotive did the same thing to my um, auto. So what ended up happening, um, this mob has got one red wire on the right hand side and a black wire on the right hand side. So the wires are all swapped around. I don't know why, the, why they did that. In hindsight, it's probably my own error as well. I should have checked. The manufacturer should have done the right thing by having the right wire on the right, right color wire on the right side. I'm gonna fix all this mess now, get that sorted out, and then I'll get back to you with a running video on the locomotive. I just wanna show you guys the problem that I ran into. Um, maybe some of the viewers actually caught on to this a little bit earlier on. Good on you for that. I missed it and I had to rewire it. <laughs> Okay, so what they've done is red is on the right hand side here. That red leads you into a false sense of thinking that that's the pickup on the right. I didn't wire that in on a pickup, but I my eye looked at it and I thought, yeah, there's two reds on the right and there's two blacks on the left that the pickups match. But what actually happened is the pickup on the back is black. So you've got a red pickup in the front and a black on that side. I actually wish now that I could have tested this on DC because maybe that little chip in the back remember in the beginning I took out that little chip maybe that little chip in the back actually converted one side over or didn't matter like a bridge rectifier and it just cleans the signal up I don't know um, maybe it's just an employee in the factory that made a bit of a, a quality control um, mistake but Look, it is what it is. It didn't damage the decoder per se. I just I wired in another decoder because I didn't um, actually investigate what was causing the short. So I've got a Buckman decoder in here now. It'll do the same thing. We'll pop it on the programming track, program the address in, and we'll see what she looks like once she's all completed. Headlights, works out nice. Rear lights. A lot of paint bleed you can see the plastics very thin on this model um, let's just make sure she's on the track right and we'll go backwards that is a super noisy locomotive very dirty that is noisy guys So, final thoughts on this one, um, yeah, I definitely won't be buying any more of these models. The motor is too small, it's um, very noisy, I don't know whether the worm gear, I don't even know if it's a plastic worm or metal worm, but it is super noisy. The noisy motor, mm, not a big fan. The way the locomotive opens up, not a big fan. The black paint already chipping off the frame on the inside, not a big fan. Um, look, it is it is what it is. It's not an expensive locomotive, it's a cheap locomotive and you get them in library schemes that you might not get in other manufacturers. And as far as Australian locomotives go, this one is not that badly priced, but it is noisy. You put a sound decoder in this and I don't think you'll hear the sound. Okay guys, let's just summarize. So in a nutshell, um, cheap locomotive, not a bad price, but it's a lot of money for something that I won't really be happy with. It's just not to the standard that I would like. Um, yes, it's a cheap locomotive. Is it good value for money? It's hard to say. I think if you put a bit of work into it and you clean up um, you do you, you settle in the motor a bit and maybe if you lube up all the gears again and maybe if you get it running a little bit quieter maybe it'll be a, a decent loco it's never going to be a puller anything more than 10, 10 wagons you probably want to do a double header on this with 
take her down to the club track and pop her on the rails, see what she's like. But I know what it's going to perform like. It's noisy, it's shuttery, and it, it's not going to be a great pull load. So for me on this one, undecided, I don't want to damn the product. I don't want to endorse the product either. I don't want you to go out and buy it and say, oh, Dynamic Loco said it's a good Loco. I am undecided on this. I think I'll leave this up open for the viewers to decide for yourselves. Um, I hope the video gives you a bit more information on the product itself. Thanks for watching.